As hyped as I get watching Apple reveal new products during their live keynote streams, my mind is often more blown away by just how incredible the filming and editing techniques that can be found in their presentations are. Seamless transitions, mesmerizing sci-fi-esque locations, and high-end VFX and CGI. Apple have set the bar for what an online product reveal should be. Take some notes, Nintendo. So let's break down the core filmmaking techniques that Apple use to captivate their viewers throughout their presentations. Apple wants to make a point about just how impressive their locations are at the Apple campus. So a common combination of aesthetics is to use deep focus along with a very high dynamic range in the image, which essentially means that we're able to see a lot of detail in the background of every single shot. Deep focus essentially means that the foreground, mid and background are all sharp and visible to the viewer versus shallow depth of field where only one of these planes of focus is sharp and you can make out the details of it. This deep focus is achieved by increasing the camera lens's aperture to a higher f-stop number. But the other half of what makes up this whole aesthetic look, this being the higher dynamic range, is actually pretty hard to do as the light within a location has to closely match the exposure of what we can see outside the location. This being natural daylight in a lot of these presentations. But due to the design of Apple's campus architecture, they seem to utilize a lot of natural light already coming into these spaces, while supplementing these rooms with their own bright key lights in order to light up the presenters. Meaning the exposure inside the room is matched up a lot more closely with the exposure outside of it. It could very well be that Apple is also using HDR capable cameras to film all of these scenes. Cameras capable of HDR take multiple exposures per frame, meaning that once these different levels of exposures are combined, the highlight and the shadow details are all preserved, resulting in a seemingly consistent level of brightness in the inside locations and also the outside locations we can see in the background. Most new iPhones take video and photo in HDR, so even you yourself can test the difference between non-HDR HDR and HDR content. Both HDR and deep focus as filmmaking techniques are actually not that commonly used across the film world. Even in Apple's own product ads where most of the shots follow a more traditional shallow depth of field look. It's probably why people have rightly questioned whether or not the backgrounds in these Apple keynotes are even real or not, with the presenters perhaps just being composited into the shots with some VFX work. Well, it turns out that pretty much what we're seeing is all real. For one, this location is called the Steve Jobs Theater and it's actually a real physical location that you can visit as a tourist if if you ever make it over to Apple's campuses. And if we want to confirm the realism of these locations even further, check out this shot. The reflections from the LED screen on the floor are matching that of Craig Federighi's, meaning the LED screen is physically in the space as much as Craig is himself. And if you need even more proof, then check out what happens when Craig points his iPhone at the LED screen in this shot. It shows up on his iPhone too. And I'm certain that based on the accuracy with the way the image moves on his phone and how the light reflections perfectly sheen off the front of his device, that this isn't any sort of visual composite in trickery. And as a final piece of evidence, check out this presenter's Apple Watch perfectly reflecting the vibrant colors of the Apple Studio display. Details like this would be so unnecessary to add via VFX, with the amount of time and effort that it would take to even make them look natural, versus just going ahead and putting a physical LED screen in the space. Although it is actually possible that some CGI is being used in these shots. As if we look at this shot, we can see that there are wires physically holding the screen in place. So cables may actually be getting painted out in post during the screen's appearance in other locations. The whole is this real or CGI questioning is further influenced by just how unreal Apple's $5 billion campus actually looks. The sci-fi-esque pristine white architecture, the humongous glass paneling, and the spaces that make you question what the hell do they even use these spaces for when they're not filming these keynotes. Our eyes have no reference point for these spaces because a lot of them are just so surreal to many of us. I mean, just look at this location right here. They've built full room sets in the background just for this keynote. In what appears to be some enormous studio space somewhere in the Apple campus. I mean, it looks pretty cool, so why not? Camera movement. The camera movement is incredibly varied throughout Apple's keynotes. From sweeping drones, jibs, dollies, and steady cams. It's smooth, calculated, and varied enough to hold our attention through what is essentially a tech-heavy hour-long presentation. For the presenters talking to camera, the camera is often moving in a subtle dolly in, out, or camera arc around the location. This helps to keep a sense of constant movement versus having a boring tripod static shot throughout the whole presentation. Full screen overlays from the LEDs help to blend these angle changes. Changes. So we can return to the presenter's A-roll at a different angle or camera movement than we've seen previously. Having camera movement like this naturally makes the shot feel more professional, as precise and consistent movement like this isn't easily replicatable by any iPhone user. Hence why it stands out and feels more cinematic to the viewer. It also helps that the locations used in these Apple keynotes are almost made for this kind of camera movement. The floors are all flat and smooth with high ceilings, meaning that dollies or techno cranes would be relatively simple to lay out and use in these spaces. There's also 
also a few instances where both the camera and the presenter help lead our eye to the next location or the next presenter. Like this example where Craig looks off to the right of screen and then the angle changes looking over his shoulder to show us who he's actually looking at. And then the shot cuts again and we're now up on the stairs with this new presenter. Editing and visual effects techniques. The most standout effects in Apple's keynotes are almost all in the editing and VFX work, with perhaps the most obvious being the masterful transitional effects used throughout the whole one hour presentations. I mean, just look at some of these transitions. So much planning and VFX work was needed to pull these off and to make most of the match cuts completely invisible to our eyes. Apple seamlessly used these transitions to blend from one location to the other and from one presenter to the next one. The most common use cases for these techniques is by using Apple's campus architecture as blend points for these edits. Jibbing down through floor levels to create the appearance of blending vertically through the ground, lateral dolly moves to pass through walls and match cuts with the products on the LED screens as we track out from the full image back out to the physical sets. Speaking of match cuts, I think these are some of the most impressive elements that Apple use in their keynotes, mainly because of just how seamless they are. Match cuts are incredibly hard to do, but Apple somehow seems to make them look effortless, with many done by camera movements blending in with an architectural element, and sometimes by using physical objects that exist in the space, like this transition from a studio light flare to a sun flare. They also do some incredibly impressive blends by adding in CGI to existing elements. Let's enjoy one of my favorite transitions in all its glory. Keeping the techniques fresh. I think what often goes unnoticed about Apple's keynotes is how they never really overuse any of these techniques. They could easily add a fancy transition or a VFX element between each location, but oftentimes a simple cutback to a previous location is all we see. There's loads of simple traditional motion graphics effects and utilizations of CG elements on top of practical location elements, making what would otherwise be a very ordinary presentation format into something continually engaging. I think Apple have really struck a balance between engaging and dynamic visual element, while still not straying away from the true stars of these keynotes, these being the fancy new Apple products themselves. And Apple still do flex their incredible cinematic techniques in full force during the product ad trailers included within these keynotes. I want to make a quick note that as of 2022, Apple have kept unbelievably secret about what goes on behind the scenes making their keynote. So even though I've analyzed these conferences to the best of my filmmaking abilities, I could be off accuracy wise with a few of the details, except how fashionable Craig Federici's shirt are because woo, we need to get that boy on the catwalk. And speaking of fashionable people, check out this other video on my channel right here where I break down some of the weekend's incredible live sessions. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already, because if you do, I'll be sure to get you the phone number of Craig Federighi's tailor. Maybe. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.